close quarters welcome to hi tv we are speaking about the new normal and also how we try to survive during these times so that's what we are talking about and this time around we are speaking about the space called online purchasing you know it has become the new thing people do not actually step out of their house to buy anymore after the first lockdown people did realize you know it's so convenient to just get everything delivered to your house why actually struggle in traffic park go get the stuff come back home so uh, the system did change we did find new normals and we got used to it so to speak about this space of purchasing things online i'm with janik jasuria who is the founder of celes daily uh, which actually was a concept that was for something else that evolved into an online store during the whole pandemic season of uh, 2020 thank you for being on the show Hi, thank you. Thank so you. this is their creative space, if you're wondering where we are right now, and it's not a playground. Um, just wanted to speak a little bit and about... Danu actually painted this here. Yeah, right thanks. Behind. <laughs> uh, just wanted to speak a little bit about this whole Celes concept. Uh, the whole online space of purchasing food has been around, but purchasing grocery became a trend and like a realistic thing that people could do during the pandemic. How, ha how was that shift before and during. Okay, so um, basically, like I've said before, uh, Celeste Daily was a Celeste was actually a hospitality management company. So we evolved from that to being a grocery platform. So when we started off, we started off with a completely new uh, experience where we did only fresh produce, only vegetables, and then gradually started evolving from there, adding on new products. So it's been quite a challenge to first move from something completely different as a hospitality industry to getting into retail. And then in retail as well, doing fresh produce, doing uh, groceries is also completely different because you're dealing with things that have uh, short expiry, short shelf life, and they're perishable goods, right? So getting used to that and also getting used to building up a business during a lockdown when we uh, have so many obstacles in terms of getting packaging material to uh, finding new staff, additional expenses in having to provide transportation, meals, and so on. So we've come quite a long way in the last year. Um, I think from where we started off in a garage uh, and then to a, a closed down restaurant to now finally having our own space here. Um, so we've come quite a distance from where we were. With now currently having about 1,800 plus products on board uh, with a wide range from uh, you know, household goods, personal care and so on. Um, so right now we are working predominantly with uh, delivery partners. Um, so they have supported us quite a bit in this journey that we've done so far coming up to where we are. Uh, there are a lot of obstacles because even for them it's something completely new. For an example, like if you look at uh, Pick Me, Uber Eats, uh, they're all platforms that were made for uh, restaurants, for food delivery. And then uh, they came and stepped up and they started uh, supporting uh, by uh, providing groceries. So they supported in a completely different way by, by giving the tech and the platform. Um, so their platforms are not built for this, so there were a lot of challenges that they also faced um, where they didn't expect so many products to be on one particular store, um, then they have uh, too much of volume in number of orders coming in in one go. So all that has brought in challenges for them, which also then uh, comes back to us and causes problems. So that's been a challenge that we've faced and we're constantly battling that with uh, them as well. And uh, yeah, so. Uh, in terms of online purchase, I think Sri Lanka is still in the process of growing towards it. Even when when it comes to purchasing a pair of shoes or even shirt, like even if you're going to get it from abroad and you know your sizes really well, you're still very skeptical, thinking, oh, would it fit me? What do I do? You have no way of yeah. giving it back. And especially when it comes to sellers, there isn't a physical store that somebody could walk in and purchase. No. But having that um, satisfaction when they purchase, let's say if they're buying like, 10 carrots and how do you exactly know that quality is checked like although you could say it's quality checked and you will get only the best there is always that you know I have to personally be there that mindset is quite rooted in Sri Lanka how is that changing now so for an example I mean for us the challenge has been uh, during the pandemic during lockdown uh, it was I mean people needed it really badly so uh, it wasn't that much of a challenge for us to get them to purchase during that time because people are desperately in need. Uh, but we never took advantage of that. We always made sure that from day one, even though people were desperately in need, we sent them the best quality. And if there were any complaints, we thought, okay, customer service was number one. So if anybody complains, we don't even ask them any questions. Immediately we would replace, refund, and so on. 
So that kind of gave a lot of people the comfort to know that there's, it's okay for us to give this a try and you know purchase our vegetables, our fresh produce that we're used to going and picking ourselves uh, from them because if something goes wrong, they're going to refund or replace. So that um, moving on to a normal time when there was no lockdown, when people were able to go back into their uh, brick and mortar stores, uh, it still helped us because people trusted our brand. Mm. So even now, I mean, we're finding it very difficult in maintaining that consistency all the time because, I mean, you're dealing with uh, fresh produce. There is no control over the size, the color and all of these stuff. Mm. I mean, one thing that people don't uh, really seem to uh, fathom is like, for an example, the nicer it looks, the more of... Uh, you know, pesticide Junk and everything that has been <laughs> put yeah. into it, right? Yeah. So sometimes it looks really ugly, deformed, different color, like, you know, all of that. But that's actually stuff that have not been really uh, sprayed with so much of pesticides and chemicals. Mm. Right? So organic. Now, in terms of purchasing, uh, something that this whole online platforms have come to, uh, people are more comfortable in making a call and making the order than actually digitally doing it. Although we do like to say that we are quite tech savvy, there are still a number of people who are not so yeah. comfortable or not even savvy with the whole transition of tech. It's not always the older people. Yeah. Even the young ones do not exactly believe in this whole process. Uh, have you all done, have, because I know there are others in the market as well, have you sort of spoken to them about creating more awareness about this so that people do not leave their homes but yet get their groceries mm -hmm. to their house? So, like you rightfully said, um, there are different markets who, there are some people who've never used PickMe, Uber or any sales platforms who are now using the platform for the first time. Um, and they don't know much about how to use that app in particular. They don't know what steps they need to take if they need to get a refund and so on. But then at the same time, there's another uh, completely different market of people who don't know to use apps in general. They prefer to call and place an order over the phone. Uh, some others would always call and try to see if they can place a direct order and then we have to guide them and teach them how to use the app and go onto the app. So at the end of the day, there is a bit of a gap, but I think it's kind of developing now because a lot of people have got used to this new normal of staying at home and ordering through these online platforms. And uh, one thing I couldn't mention before is we're not really an online platform. Like for an example, if you look at um, the e-commerce platforms, like websites that usually deliver within 24 hours or they try to, like when it, there are quite a few who've started up now who try to deliver within six to seven hours. Um, but we would position ourselves more as like a quick serve, right? So we're like the McDonald's of groceries. Right. Where there are quite a few of us in the market right now. There are a few of our competitors who are also working very closely with us in terms of trying to maintain the same quality and consistency. Um, so all of us try our best on a normal day to uh, fulfill an order between a maximum of 30 to 40 minutes from the time we receive the order. Considering the mindset of people during a lockdown in terms of some reading that I've done, people are like not actually purchasing the most essential items always, although <laughs> the government does open the doors saying, you know, essential services. Um, but even in essential services, we have found the not so essential ones. Um, there has been a like you know there has been a boom in market for like you know shopping clothes to accessories although we have no places to go these are some of the top list things but when it comes to a store like you uh what do, would you say are the most selling items are you talking about when these orders come in for a day would you say the ratio is really high for essentials like you know the ray rice the yeah. salmon tins and like how we like to call it tin malu and <laughs> all of those or is it ranging between like you know maybe i should get some chips and like snacks and confetti yeah <laughs> yeah so basically um i would say we have a mix and we have kind of figured out that people order different things at different points of the day um, throughout the day, right now, given the situation, a lot of people are ordering more of essentials. So there's a lot of uh, vegetables, fresh produce, uh, dairy products, and uh, rice, and you know, personal care, home goods that they order. And then amidst all of that, we have a few people who, uh, are, you know, trying to stay sane, being stuck at home, who uh, want their Netflix and chill packs so they can get some, uh, let's say for an example, some chips, their Red Bull and so on that they get to themselves. Uh, which are not necessarily considered essentials, but most of that would just come from time to time throughout the day. But during the day, it's mostly uh, the essentials. This concept called organic has been around in Sri Lanka for a long time, and especially I think the younger market has adapted very well to this whole organic concept. I just want to know, as someone who is in this trade, is there actually something called organic that we can be 100% sure of? Well, um, 
it's very hard for me to say that uh, somebody who says that they're organic are definitely organic. I mean, there are plenty of farmers who would confirm that they're organic, they have certifications, but being 100% organic uh, is very difficult for you to really monitor, I guess. Um, but there are so many people in the market who have, for an example, Sara Kepel, who have been in the organic business for some time, and we work with them very closely. They, they are the main suppliers for us when it comes to organic. They export quite a bit, uh, and they have a pretty good uh, business set up already in place. Uh, they have all the certifications, they uh, export to the, uh, to the EU and so on. So I think uh, we trust them when they say that they're getting their produce from organic farmers. They have a list of their farmers who are certified and registered with them and uh, they also have their own farms. Um, so I think it's also about um, some people having bad uh, experiences. So for, there have been issues where people uh, who, this is something that might be wrong for me to say, that if they can't afford to pay the price for organic, instead of saying that they don't want to buy organic because it is quite expensive and it's quite a challenging thing to spend so much on organic, some people will condemn organic in general, right? Mm. So that also happens sometimes. So sadly, it is uh, another challenge that they need to face with organic. But we don't have our own where we say, okay, we have organic produce on our own. We just partner with people who have been recognized for that, certified, and uh, Sara Keta is our partner at the moment. In terms of uh, looking at the future, do you think there will be a lifestyle change in people visiting more groceries and stores and, you know, like places where they can touch and feel and buy? Or do you think at least the urban community will stick to the whole purchase online thing? Well, that's pretty interesting. I mean, we looked into uh, how the patterns are going to be. And what we realized is that no matter how much we make uh, online purchasing uh, convenient and uh, quick and safe and all of that, People, a lot of people find it kind of therapeutic as well to go into a grocery store, walk around, look and see what they want and pick it up, right? So we're not going to be able to come to a point where it's eliminated 100% like, and you're just going to have online purchasing. But uh, as a matter of convenience, like right now we operate more as a top up, right? So people will place an order in between their grocery store visits, uh, then there's some others who will order the entire range from us. So we have a mix, but definitely there's going to be a bit of a change in the market in the future. There'll be a lot of people who will stick to purchasing online. Uh, some others would have a mix, but there'll be more um, online pro purchasing and sales happening in, in Sri Lanka, especially because we've been a bit slow in keeping up with the rest of the world in terms of e-commerce. Mm. Have you ever thought of, because COVID makes you busy, I think the <laughs> lockdown makes, yeah. uh, makes your operation like completely 24-7 uh, packed to the rim. Have you ever thought of what might have to change when normal becomes just ordinary life? You mean personally? Yeah, for your brand. Um, so, I mean for us right now, we've been pretty much stuck with trying to keep up with the current demand, right? So, it's been long days for myself, the whole team where everyone starts pretty early in the day and we're going at it throughout the day because we've got a, a, a demand that is very difficult for us to keep up with and we, we have a small team, we can't get more staff given the situation because it's not going to be something that's going to last long. I mean, the government says that the lockdown is going to be released uh, on, on seven, seven days, seven day, it keeps extending pushed, yeah. and that happens because I mean, nobody knows uh, for sure whether it's going to be safe enough to open up or not. So all these obstacles have made it difficult for us to really plan for post-COVID immediately. But right now, we're just pretty much trying to deal with the issues we have now. But afterwards, we're going to look at a lot in terms of once things get back to normal, how we can create more of like, you know, convenience, uh, quick serve packages for people to make it easier for them um, and maybe have more opportunities for them to, you know, have the convenience of sending a gift from overseas and, you know, pampers to be done, corporate orders. And we've also seen a bit of a gap in the market for a lot of uh, restaurants and cafes who don't have the same volume they had before so they can't get a supplier to come and drop off uh, to their store uh, they can't really it doesn't make sense for them to go and buy from a market because they need to have an additional person to do that so we're trying to see if we can cater to them as well where we give them bulk uh, orders and you know take care of that segment as well brilliant yeah. all right so um i cannot ask him what he does during lockdown <laughs> because i know it's only just work uh, because it's the other way around how things work here uh, but um hoping that everything does come back to normal but this is a market that we need to all 
tapping to and get used to the whole new normal in terms of purchasing online and trusting the brand that you are purchasing it from. So always go through, do your research, find your favorite brand and then uh, get used to the whole technical aspect to it. Uh, someone like me, I, I have literally never ordered uh, like groceries <laughs> on my phone uh, because I, I have never had the reason to because it's done at home so um, I do not know the whole process but I think we should all be exposed to it at some okay. point so that we know that this might be the new operation for us to all stick to. Uh, thank you so very much Janik I wish you all the very best and uh, as always I think you all actually do the service that people really do worry about oh my god how are we going to feed our children it's always a problem when you are like locked between doors at least uh, they actually feel that cap for us so thank you so very much uh, we will see you with another episode of close quarters where we speak to someone uh, from a particular industry as to how they have contributed or changed during the whole covid pandemic until we see you then you stay safe in your quarters